easy winner today, 34-8. They come, seventh ranked in the nation, undefeated, 4-0, 1-0 in the conference. The Tigers of Auburn University, as Tim Foley was telling you, a more balanced Tiger team, a more team-oriented Auburn squad, and it's a tough one. And here come the Vanderbilt Commodores. They got their first victory of the year last week, 24-18 over Duke. Watson Brown, the new head coach, the same coach who was on the staff with Pat Dye back at East Carolina University. This is a Vanderbilt team with 9 out of 22 position changes since their opener against Alabama. So there's questions to be answered. How good is Auburn? How much better is Vanderbilt than they were in that opener? We'll be back to find out in just a moment. Auburn won the toss and elected to receive, and Vanderbilt's Johnny Clark, a redshirt freshman from Birmingham, will kick off. Tommy Agee is the deep man for Auburn, and it's going to come down to Agee right about the nine-yard line. And Auburn seals it off, and here comes Agee to the 43-yard line. The dam breaks open on the opening kickoff. Number three, Renford Reese with a tackle, a 49-yard return. Auburn knocking over Vanderbilt defenders like bowling pins on that open. Let's see how they do at the line of scrimmage now. Brent Fullwood, the leading rusher, he averages eight yards a carry, folks. That's why Tamborello Cowart Cyril, strong side of that very strong offensive line. Berger gonna throw right side here's Gaines cuts against the grain and gets it to the 38 yard line throwing on the first down and that's not the Auburn we saw last year let's have a look at the defensive alignment now for the Vanderbilt Commodores David Worm a former tackle has moved to nose guard has his hands full today with Tamborello the defensive line the linebackers Chris Gaines the leader there Bob Scanlon has moved into the starting lineup Mark Whaler is the rover the defensive secondary for the Vanderbilt Commodores has Baker Price Gentry and Roman a lot of changes there too it is second down. Here comes 22 forward. Auburn scores on the second play of the game. 38 yards. And we have only 51 seconds ticked off this clock here. And that apparently is how good Auburn can be. Remember, Vanderbilt is last in the SEC in defense. So you got your classic mismatch here. Here is Chris Knapp for the point after, junior from Americas. And it's good. And with 51 seconds gone in this football game, Auburn has quickly gone in front, seven to nothing. Let's have a look at that touchdown run. Just a straight toss here, Bob. They lock up man to man. AG leading the way. A good block by Cyril's at the top. They just lose containment. Price filling the lane inside. Roman's got to turn that play back in. You see Alan Roman, number 44. Whaler diving, but it's senseless. Auburn scores six. And that was about as quick as it can happen, folks. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Freshman Mark Johnson right at the goal line. He averages 27 and a half yards of return. Not this time. Down he goes. At the 18-yard line, he was hit by 49 Richard Manry, a special team specialist for Auburn, who is one of the captains today. Brent Fullwood with his third touchdown on his touchdown run only moments ago. There's the scoring play, and here are the Vanderbilt Commodores. A starting lineup, number nine, Tim Richardson, has moved in at quarterback. Richardson has replaced Mark Ratcher because he's more of an option player. They can run it better there. Mark Johnson, Carl Woods are the running backs back there. And Eric Harmon, the key player. Actually, that lineup is wrong. Harmon is at center. Green has been uh, moved back to second team. On first down and 10. They're going to pitch it. It's thrown into the end zone. Unbelievable. It's fallen on by Auburn. Touchdown, Tigers. Well, just as you think, nothing worse can happen. Vanderbilt throws the ball into their own end zone, and Auburn falls on it. The man with the ball, 39, linebacker, Kurt Crane. They're running the option here, Bob, trying to get it to the outside. Richardson is hammered there. Looked like Andre Bruce, number 93. Crawford now, Everett Crawford's got to fall on the ball, take the two points. He's not able to do that. Auburn recovered it for six, and that's the way this song goes, buddy. A minute and six seconds, 14 points for Auburn. Unbelievable. We'll be back in just a moment. Auburn has a kind of ability where that might happen today. Here's Tim Richardson. 
real trouble on that first play from the line of scrimmage. His pitch to Crawford didn't connect, and it went into the end zone for the touchdown. First down, 10, Vanderbilt from the 28-yard line of the Commodores in front of their hometown crowd. Draw play, about five to Carl Woods, number 27, the fullback. The Auburn defensive unit be the first chance we've seen to really put their lineup on the screen for you. Tracy Rocker is just an incredibly good player. They're also, Auburn's trying to recruit his brother out of uh, Atlanta High School. Russ Carricker had two interceptions last week. He's playing in place of the injured Edward Phillips at linebacker. And Tom Powell is the leader back there in the secondary, number nine, the free safety. He can really tackle, as you'll see during this game. Rodney Barrett, 26, and Woods, 27, in the backfield now for the Commodores. It is second down five. And here comes Carl Woods. He's got an alley. All the way to the 38-yard line of the Tigers. Woods had a 70-yard touchdown run last week against Duke. That one for 29. Chip Powell with the tackle for the Tigers. This is the fourth year that we've seen Carl Woods running it. I, I haven't seen him run with this much intensity in the previous three years. He's going to be Vanderbilt's leading all-time rusher by the time it's over. As you saw him run by Tommy Powell there, Chip Powell finally making the stop. It'll be first down 10 from the 38-yard line. Oh, Auburn. Auburn, that's got to be the longest run they've given up this year. I'll have to check that out. Here is Crawford driving to about the 36-yard line. The longest run actually was from Tennessee. William Howard had a 36-yarder, so it's the second largest run that's been given up by Auburn this year. 12.34 to go, quarter number one. Auburn with a 49-yard kickoff return. And then a touchdown scamper by uh, Fullwood. Excuse me, make that A.G. who took it into the end zone uh, for the touchdown. Uh, Fullwood, uh, correct myself again, on 38 yards. And then Vanderbilt fumbled in the end zone. Recovered by Auburn, and that's why it's 14-0. Second down, eight from the 36. Richardson wants to throw, has some time, going long into double coverage. Incomplete in the end zone. Ooh, that was a dangerous pass. There were many more Auburn players there than there were Vanderbilt players. Boo Mitchell, the intended receiver, but Powell and Porter were really closer to the ball. And there's Pat Dye, the first full-time boss that Watson Brown had, the Vanderbilt coach. Pat Dye pulled this Auburn football team together after the Cotton Bowl, which was kind of an indication of how the season went the frustration and he just told them they were going to work a lot harder this year and if they were still around in the fall they'd understand what commitment meant it is third down eight from the 36 yard line of auburn richardson hit as he throws it it is caught anyway they say it is complete at the 26 yard line and it should be enough for a first down Let's wait till they spot it. Everett Crawford making the dive. It was 93, Andre Bruce. Watch this, Tim. Richardson looking for Crawford all the way. Bruce gets there, knocks his arm, and Crawford is an intense competitor. As you see, Carl Parker, number 12, dive for the ball. Everett Crawford comes up with it. Auburn has outscored opponents in the first quarter of their first four games, 62 to nothing. Nobody has scored on them in the first quarter. First and 10 Vanderbilt at the 26-yard line of the Tigers. Fumble, and the ball is loose. It's recovered, I believe, back at the 30 by Richardson. You're looking at a very nervous Vanderbilt team, and they have good reason to be. Bruce was back there mixing it up again. Andre Bruce may be the best athlete on this Auburn team, number 93. You'll be seeing him all day long. Loss of four. See Watson Brown there's got to be a little concern with the the unease that Tim Richardson has started this game Richardson is playing basically because they felt like they needed more mobility at quarterback They have to run the option in order to run the football and he's just a lot more mobile than Mark Ratcher Two miscues already one recovered for a touchdown that one Richardson able to get himself on the second down here They come Richardson just turns it up and gets back to the line of scrimmage that looked like water pouring through a sieve. We'll be right back here to Dudley Field in a moment, but now back to Atlanta and Kevin Slayton. All right, Bob, thank you very much. A baseball update for you. Billy Dorn has just pounded a two-run homer for the Astros in the second off, Ron Darling. They now lead 4-0 after RBI singles from Cruz and Walling in the first. Now back to Nashville. Well, I got a blowout going there in the baseball game also. I know how their announcers feel. <laughs> well, that, that previous play wasn't as bad as it might appear. It was a quarterback draw, so they weren't really trying to hold him out. Now you got a timeout call from Tim Richardson. This is the seventh play of this drive for Vanderbilt. 
Just to recap quickly again, a 49-yard kickoff return for Auburn, and then Fullwood took it in two plays later from 38 yards out, and Auburn led 7-0. Then after the kickoff on the first play from the line of scrimmage, Vanderbilt pitched it back. Everett Crawford couldn't handle the pitch from Tim Richardson. It went into the end zone. Auburn fell on it. And the point afters were both good, and it's 14 to nothing. But Vanderbilt has driven it down here to the 30-yard line, actually down to the 26, where they've stalled. And we were talking, Tim, about how good Auburn is. It all is told right there. Those are SEC rankings. We talked about them revamping their offense in the open, Bob, and they did the same thing with the defense. Basically, what they're trying to do is present the look on a consistent basis of a two-deep zone. And from that, they make their moves. They really... I think uh, put Tennessee at a disadvantage because Tennessee, as you know, calls most of their plays from the line of scrimmage. They weren't able to determine the coverage in a pre-snap formation, which really helped the Auburn defense, and they seem to have perfected that under the uh, tutorage of Wayne Hall, the defensive coordinator. It'll be third down 14 at the 30-yard line. Vanderbilt in that spread formation. They run out of the spread formation primarily for passing, and out of a wishbone when they try to run, although you can see it mixed up sometimes. Here's Richardson. In time to throw. It is complete to the 11-yard line. Make that the 16-yard line. A 15-yard pass completion to Carl Parker, the tight end. If there is a weakness in the Auburn defense, Chip Powell doesn't have quite as much speed as Kevin Porter on the other side, and they may work on the right side of that Auburn secondary. Parker, a skilled receiver. They had him in the slot the last time we saw him against Alabama, but they've slid him to an outside receiver now. That's the 17th catch on the year for Carl Parker. Crawford leads this Vanderbilt team in catches with 25. First down 10 from the 15, draw play Crawford. A little bit of running room. Inside the 15 to about the 13. And we were talking about third down conversions. Vanderbilt has converted two so far. Two out of two. And Auburn has only a 16.4% conversion rate the whole game. And that's amazing. There have only been three third downs converted against Auburn's defense in the first half of their first four games. So that's just remarkable. As you uh, mentioned, 16% in the entire game. So that's a real testament to the Defensive coaches, you saw Pat Dye on the screen there along with Reggie Herring, a linebacker coach. Second and eight from the 13-yard line. Mitchell to the left, Parker to the right. Earl Wood steps up to try to pick up some blockers. Time to throw. Incomplete. He had his man. He couldn't hold the ball. Looking for Everett Crawford about the three. Powell covering number nine. Close but no cigar. It'll bring up third down. Richardson checks off here, Bob. That's what Carl Woods is doing up there. It would, they bluffed him into checking off. We don't see that very often. Everett Crawford, uh, some of the surest hands in the SEC, led the SEC last year in receiving with 50 catches. Already he's got, I think, 25 going into this game. So Vanderbilt has to make the plays when they have the opportunity. They're out man, they're out gun, they're out ability. So they have to come up with every play they can. Third down eight from the 13. Another third down conversion situation. Richardson with some time this time. It was tipped. It's incomplete. Benji Rowland, 96, the nose tackle for Auburn, was there. And Vanderbilt does have an opportunity to, for the first time this year, in any of the Auburn games, score on Auburn. The ball is at the 13. That'll make this a 30-yard field goal attempt for Alan Herline. And between the 30 and 39, he is four out of four. Alan Herline, he only missed one inside the 50, and that was the 41-yarder at the opening of the Alabama game, which we televised. It's up and good. And Vanderbilt has broken the scoreless string of the Auburn defense, but still trails 14 to 3. 8.39 to go. Quarter number one. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Hey. At Auburn, a deep one, but the backfield team of James Brooks and Joe Cribbs are unmatched in Tiger football history. Here is Don Orr, the quarterback for Vanderbilt. And this is the bowl game in which Vanderbilt defeated Auburn back in 1955. And Bob James scored the touchdown for Auburn, but Vanderbilt went on to win that bowl game in 1955. 25 to 13, the Commodores.
Very unusual series as these teams have not played each other very often, even though they're members of the Southeastern Conference. Here's her line with the kickoff for Vanderbilt. And he really gets his foot into it, and that's one way to stop the return. A.G. driven out of the back of the end zone. So Auburn will have to go the long way this time on the previous kickoff, a 49-yard return. This time, nothing, and it'll be first down 10 Auburn at their own 20-yard line. Auburn has run only two offensive plays so far. One of them, the 38-yard touchdown run by Brent Bullwood. Jeff Berger, the quarterback, leads the SEC in passing efficiency. A.G. and Fullwood in the backfield. Bolton and Donaldson, the wide receivers on this drive, both of them to the right side. They're just going to hand it off to number 22, Brent Fullwood. He gets about five to the 25-yard line. Auburn averaging 248 yards a game, rushing the football. Pat Dye has a situation that a lot of coaches would love to have. He's got three people that can really carry the ball, really four with Campbell, Jesse Fullwood, and freshman James Joseph, and it's just a matter of getting each one of them enough playing time to keep them happy. Second and five from the 25. Here comes Fullwood again, this time a yard or two. So Auburn will have a third down conversion situation for the first time in this game. 7.57 to go the first quarter. Auburn 14, Vanderbilt 3 from Dudley Field and an overcast, Nash overcast Nashville, Tennessee. Third down two, the ball right about the 28-yard line. Auburn with that wishbone short yardage. Reggie Ware, their short yardage specialist in there. He's number 36 for Auburn. Here's the pitch back to A.G. He is short of the first down. And that fires up this Vanderbilt team. 64, Bob Scanlon out of Chicago making the play for the Commodores. And Vanderbilt holds them much to the thrill of this crowd at Dudley Field. It's an unbalanced line, Bob. They run it back into the short side, thinking that Vanderbilt would be uh, sliding or slanting their line to the wide side. Good job by Scanlon fighting it upfield. Uh, the Mount Carmel High graduate from Chicago, Illinois, makes a play. Here is Brian Schulman, a sophomore from Brentwood, Tennessee's punt. Comes down to 24, Brad Gaines out to the 30-yard line. And the Commodores trailing 14 to three, get the football. 48-yard punt, seven-yard return. And the crowd on their feet here, cheering Vanderbilt for stopping Auburn. I think you may be right, Tim. You said that sometimes a 14 to nothing quick score like that with these young men at Auburn, no matter how talented they are, can take a little edge off. And if Vanderbilt gets something going, it can change things a little. No question about it. Vanderbilt has the ability to score. And I don't think that's a, that's a question mark in anybody's mind. It's just can they stop this Auburn machine? Seven fits and eight Piercy, the wide receivers in there for the Commodores at first down and 10 on the 30. Tim Richardson's going to give it to Carl Woods again. Woods gets a couple and not much more. Kurt Crane, 39, the inside linebacker with a stop for the Tigers. Let's go back to our studios in Atlanta and Kevin Sleep. All right, Bob, Illinois coach Mike White made seven starting lineup changes this week. And right here, Ray Wilson goes 15 yards for a touchdown. It's paying off for the Illini. They lead Purdue 7 0 in the first quarter. Now let's go back to Nashville. And back here in Nashville, second down eight from the 32. Boo Mitchell, Tony Piercy, the wide receivers in there now for the Commodores. Out of that passing set, Richardson has his man. It's incomplete. Everett Crawford has dropped his second pass. So Crawford, as Tim pointed out, the sure-handed receiver is disappointed twice early in this ball game. They have moved him to the slot position, Bob. A couple of years, we've seen him running from that A-back position, motioning back and forth, and running a lot of those quick, short option routes that a weak back would run coming out of the backfield. They feel like he's got the, the, the speed to threaten deep and, and also the knowledge of the ability to read defenses, so that's where they've got him now. And I'm sure he's amazed with his uh, lack of sticky fingers here today. This is a tough situation. Auburn may be coming third down eight at the 32-yard line. Auburn into coverage. They're not coming. Richardson throwing. His man fell down. Had him in the open. It's number eight, Tony Piercy, but he simply fell down at the 49-yard line. Vanderbilt goes three plays and out, and the Vanderbilt punter, Alan Herline, comes in to punt. Herline shanked a couple last week against Duke and had a disappointing performance. He's averaging 40 yards per punt. He had been up around the 45 mark. Number 19, Trey Gaines will be back at his own 21-yard line for Auburn to receive the punt of Alan Herline. 
It's where a pretty good punt. Gaines at the 27, looking for the wall. Down he goes at the 37-yard line. Number 72, Henry Bielen, the freshman, with a stop. A little more than nine yards on the return. It was a 40-yard punt. With a score of 14 to 3, Auburn, we have 551 remaining in quarter number one from Nashville. It's leading 14 to 3, 551 to go quarter number one. Have the football. First down 10 at their own 37-yard line. And their true freshman, number 10, James Joseph, is in there at tailback. 6'2, 200 pounds out of Phoenix City, Alabama. He's a good one. This pass to the tight end, 86 Walter Reeves out to the 43-yard line. It is complete. Going to our Atlanta studios, and here's Kevin Slayton. All right, Bob, we've got a major upset in the making. Cincinnati recovered a Penn State fumble in the end zone, and the Bearcats lead the Nittany Lions 7 0 in the second quarter. Another major upset. Georgia Tech 14 0 over North Carolina State in the first quarter. Now back to Nashville. On second down three, here's the pitch to the freshman Joseph. He gets close to, and I think he achieved first down yardage out near the 48 yard line. Chip Torrey Price, another true freshman from Chicago, making the stop for Vanderbilt, number 43. You hear a lot of talk about Watson Brown, the man that's been following him around, coordinating defenses in Cincinnati and TCU and Vanderbilt is a man named Dick Hopkins. We'll talk more about him after the snap. On first down, 10, Berger to throw, plenty of time. Over the middle, it is complete to Lawyer Tillman, the 6'5 wide receiver leading receiver on this Auburn team, and Tillman drives his way to the 33-yard line before he's hit by Torrey Price, a gain of 17 yards. Now, this is Auburn's version of Harold Carmichael here, Bob. <laughs> this, this rascal is a tall dude. Look, look at him go up and catch the ball inside. He's a fine, fine receiver, and uh, that's one of the reasons I think they put more emphasis on the running game, the passing game, excuse me. On first down, it's Tommy Agee getting to about the 32 and a half yard line. Bob Scanlon, sophomore strong linebacker, making the stop for Vanderbilt. Scanlon, the tough hole plugger for Vanderbilt and a very key player if Vanderbilt is able to be successful at all in stopping the awesome Auburn running game. Second down eight will be the situation for the Auburn Tigers, leading 14-3, 4.20 to go in the first quarter. Berger, three out of three for 29 yards, throwing the football thus far. Draw play to Joseph. Look at that move. First down run by James Joseph. He is big. 6-2. Let's watch Ben Tambrello work here against David Worm. Tambrello takes Worm upfield on the draw. Joseph now slides underneath, avoids Chris Gaines, picks up about seven yards. But Tambrello is one of the best interior linemen in the country. And the... Uh, the Auburn folks are touting him as an Outland Trophy candidate. Wishbone, third down one. Run it right up the middle. Uh, they got it this time to about the 23-yard line. Reggie Ware, the short yardage specialist, 245-pound fullback for Auburn, gets the first down yardage. He's bigger than some of the defensive linemen for the Vanderbilt Commodores, and he's the fullback. David Worm, by the way, the nose guard who's playing opposite Tamborello is his first game at nose guard. He's 6'2", 250. Tamborello, 6'3", 270. On a first down at the 23-yard line. Here comes James Joseph. Oh, he's hard to stop. What a player. Chris Gaines with his third tackle today for Vanderbilt. Let's take a look at Ben Tamborello again. Gets that angle block on Worm, and all he's trying to do is maintain contact and get that separation between he and the guard. When you've got big, strong linemen like Auburn has, the eye formation is made for you, especially with people running the ball like Fullwood and Joseph. On second down four. Into the backfield is Joseph. Back to the 20. Chris Gaines leading the way, number 34 for Vanderbilt. He's the Vanderbilt leader defensively, that young man right there. His brother's a freshman on this team. His older brother is also a player, a linebacker for Seattle Seahawks. Chris has, has been a real stalwart for him last year. I don't think he's played up to his potential this year, though. He's just starting to come to life. Third and seven from the 20. Big defensive play for Vanderbilt. They have what they call their nickel package in there this time. Berger, incomplete, intended for number 10, James Joseph. So from the 20, Auburn sends in 
the field goal kicking unit, Chris Knapp. Number eight is the kicker. Brian Schulman, the punter, is the holder. It will be a 37-yard field goal attempt. And there you see the stats on Knapp at that distance. He is perfect on the year. Three out of three. A junior from Americus, Georgia. 14 to 3. Auburn leading 2.14 to go in the first period. The only thing wrong with that is it was too high. <laughs> that field goal is good. And it's Auburn 17, Vanderbilt 3 with 2.08 to go first period of play. Dudley Field in Nashville, Tennessee. Temperature right at 68. It's an overcast day. Tim Foley, the pilot, you know more about the weather than I do. What would you, how would you describe it meteorologically from a pilot's viewpoint? Well, I think that it's uh, probably 3,500 scattered winds out of 150 at uh, 8 knots. <laughs> and I would like a little bit more sunshine for my trip to Tulsa. And there they are talking on the sideline. That's, uh, I think, P uh, Pat Sullivan, who was talking to the offensive team from Auburn tonight. We have the only two top 20 teams in action game today. These are the only two top 20 teams playing each other in America today, Washington and Stanford. Stanford, surprisingly, 4-0. and oh. That'll be Skip Carey and Paul Horning out there in Northern California on some of these TNT stations. It is Joe Johnston. He found a crack. Out to the 45-yard line, tripped up by Chris Knapp, the kicker. A 40-yard kickoff return. The Vanderbilt has some pretty good field position here. Oh, the change in the 40 to the 35 for the kickoff has added more excitement to this ballgame. Well, Watson Brown commented on that yesterday afternoon as you see Joe Johnson taking it upfield and Knapp does a nice job. He at least gets a piece of him, slows him down enough for the help to arrive. Minute 58 to go, first quarter. Vanderbilt drove down to get a field goal earlier. Trailed 17 to 3. Richardson has his man. It is complete for about eight yards to the 48-yard line of Auburn to 26 Rodney Barrett, sophomore out of Franklin, Tennessee. Richardson, three out of eight, passing the football now for 32 yards. Watson Brown was concerned about the turnover ratio of his Vanderbilt Commodores. They'd given up the ball. They'd thrown 10 interceptions. They'd only intercepted the ball one time. That's why they've elected to stay on the ground more, maintain possession, try to eat up the clock, and not give the ball to the defense. It's second down, about three from the 48 of Auburn. Nothing going that time. My, oh, my, there is no time for the option play to develop down the line. Andre Bruce, 93, the man keying the play for Auburn. The idea there is to slide down the line and have option one, option two, option three, but you don't even get to one, Tim. Right, that was like, uh, <laughs> you know, that uh, quote by Big Daddy Lipscomb. He says, I just grab all the guys that are close and peel them off one by one until I get to the ball carrier. And that's what, <laughs> that's what that looked like that time. You see Benji rolling in there and Crazy Rocker. Third and seven from the 48 of Vandy. Four-man rough, Richardson. Carl Woods, first down, and he falls down. Carl Woods has a lot of problem. He's playing well this year, but he has fallen down more than any big league back I've seen. And he fell down that time, but he got the first down to the 41-yard line of Auburn. Good call here, middle screen. It's just like a draw, except for the linebackers take deeper drops. They've got a larger separation. And I think sometimes Carl Woods gets so excited and his, he thinks his feet are going faster than they have the ability to go and just catches his foot on the turf. First and 10 at the 41, 17 seconds to go in the first quarter. Richardson, a little time. It's complete to Parker, down to the 21 yard. Another first down for Vanderbilt. But one thing's for sure, Vanderbilt has moved the ball more successfully on Auburn than any team thus far this year early in the game. A 21-yard pass completion. Time gets down to seven seconds to go in this half. So, you know, you take away that fumble in the end zone, which turned into an Auburn touchdown, and you've got a real ball game on your hands. And should Vanderbilt be able to score and make it 17-10, to 10, it may still be a ball game. I think we got a chance to see a lot of action yet this afternoon, Bob. 
Well, that's the end of the first quarter. The score, Auburn 17, Vanderbilt 3. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. First down 10, just outside the 20 of Auburn. Team switch sides. Vanderbilt going left to right now. Dudley Field in Nashville. Bob Neal, Tim Foley with you. They're unbalanced here, Bob. Rodney Barrett play a little slow developing. Couldn't quite tell as I had the binoculars on at that time, Tim. You look at the first quarter stats. Couldn't quite tell what Vanderbilt had in mind. It looked like an audible checkoff at the line. It looked like a reverse, uh, and it, it wanted to go back inside. Vanderbilt was unbalanced to the wide side of the field, and I, I was maybe thinking they might try a tackle eligible. With Watson out there, you never know what's going to happen. Loss of one on that one. Second down 11 from the 21 now. We have Johnson, 20. Woods, 27 in the backfield with Tim Richardson. Everett Crawford, number one, the wing back on the right. <laughs> Penalty marker is down, and Richardson is down at the 27, 28-yard line. Number 90, Brian Smith from Opelika, Alabama. That's the first penalty marker in this football game. 14-11 to go, first half. It's against Vanderbilt. Holding will be the call. There's Mark Gentry, our referee in today's crew of Southeastern Conference officials. Decline, third down. With the loss, Auburn will take the play instead of the penalty. There's a look of the crew working today's football game. They had what they wanted there, Bob. They had Everett Crawford locked up on a linebacker and eventually he worked his way free, but Richardson just didn't have enough time to stay in there and find him. Third down, 17 now. Approaching, getting out of field goal range here. Auburn with a stunt, Richardson. Just throws it in the middle of nowhere, but Richardson goes down real hard underneath Tracy Rocker all the way back at the 45-yard line. So it will bring up fourth down and 17. The line of scrimmage is the 26-yard line. It'll be a 43-yard attempt by Alan Herline. And he can hit it from there between, in, he's one out of two between the 40 and 49. He missed the 41-yarder, as I pointed out, against Alabama, his first field goal attempt of the year. They'll put this at the 33. So it'll be a 43-yarder right from the middle of the field. It's not even close. And Vanderbilt misses on the 43-yard attempt from senior Allen Herline. And the score remains Auburn 17, Vanderbilt 3 with 13.47 to go in the first half of play. 13 to 3, Auburn has rushed for 66 yards thus far. Vanderbilt has rushed for only 10. Look at that average. And that's why Auburn's 4-0 and and ahead 17 to 3 here. Berger with the fake. They got it going for everything. It's open. Goodbye to the kitchen. Yes, it's 29, Duke Donaldson caught from behind, but not until he gets to the 16-yard line. That was freshman Torrey Price, 43, who ran him down. 57 yards on the first play, like taking candy from a baby. The, the play action freezes Torrey Price. Donaldson scoots in there behind him, and Berger puts it right on the nose. Actually, it's number two with the tackle, Andy Baker. Torrey Price was still chasing. Now it's first down, 10 at the 16. Auburn leading 17 to 3. 13 minutes to go, first half. Here comes Collis Campbell, number 38. Collis gets a couple of yards on the left side. He's the senior from Florence. You've probably heard about him if you follow Auburn in SEC football. Collis Campbell, very disappointed and frustrated with his playing time, left the team a few weeks ago. After he thought about it, though, he came back and talked to Pat Dye. Pat Dye said, I'd be happy to have you back if you, if you want to come back to the team. He did that. He's in good graces. He's playing today, and he is an excellent running back. But you're dealing with Fullwood and Jesse in front of him and a great freshman by the name of James Joseph. So many good ones. On second down, seven. Not much this time. 21, Vincent Harris, a redshirt freshman fullback, stopped at the 10. It'll bring up a third down play for the Auburn Tigers. I'm sure Campbell was disappointed because he took a red shirt year last year because he knew he wouldn't be playing with much with Bo going for the Heisman and, and uh, in anticipation of getting a lot of play as a senior. And I'm sure if he looks at it from a logical standpoint, he can understand there's Brent Foot, Fullwood, there's Tim Jesse, who's probably as good an all-around back as any of them. Third and four from the 10-yard line. 
Here's the pitch to Carlos Campbell. He uh, he gets close. He may have the first down. It'll depend where they spot the ball. They're going to spot it close enough for the first down. It'll be first down Auburn at the six yard line of Vanderbilt. We certainly are watching a different Jeff Berger than we've seen in the past, Bob. Obviously a lot more confident, more poised, understands what he's trying to do, and obviously Pat Sullivan has had a, a big effect on his playing skills, as does experience help. Out of the full house backfield, Collis Campbell, touchdown, Tigers! No problem for Collis Campbell, and that's a touchdown he wouldn't have had had he stayed off the football team. 23 to 3, Auburn. Campbell is also a very popular man with the players. Everybody understood his frustration, and uh, as you said, had a couple days to think about it, come back, and uh, now he's doing what he likes to do, looking forward to a career in the NFL. Chris Knapp. Point after is good. 24 to 3 with 11.36 to go in the first half of play from Dudley Field in Nashville. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. six-yard touchdown run. Pat Dye talked about team effort. Look at Brent Fullwood, stiff of Vanderbilt player. Reggie Ware gets the block and touchdown Carlos Campbell. Well, the ball goes in and out of the end zone into the flowers back there. It's retrieved by Vanderbilt. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. It'll be first down 10. Commodores trailing 24-3. to There's that scoring drive on the part of the Auburn Tigers. Of course, they opened it with the 57-yard reception by Donaldson, who was just barely caught from behind by Andy Baker. There's Pat Dye, has had a troublesome couple of years. It's always difficult when you have a, a superstar in your football team like Bo Jackson. No matter how good a player he is or how good a person he is, it always creates a little bit of dissent on the football team. And now they're playing 11 men all together, really going after it. Richardson, complete to Boo Mitchell and out of bounds for the first down at the 33-yard line. Lou Mitchell, a sophomore from Valdosta, 13-yard reception. The quarterback pressure is there every time. Every time Richardson looks up, somebody's right in his face. I believe it was 94 Craig Ogletree this time. Just came clean, missed assignment, sandwiched Tim Richardson. First and 10 from the 33. the draw Carl Woods needs a block gets it out to the 40 yard line give him about six or seven that time Tracy Rocker 74 with the tackle for Auburn they're gonna spot the ball right on the 40 yard line bringing up a second down three Carl Woods has had a marvelous career here with Vanderbilt and as we said earlier I think he's running with more intensity now than I've seen him run he's certainly a little bit more reckless and more upfield than in the past. Here is Brad Gaines, the freshman, trying to get the first down, and he, he's going to be up close to it. About a yard short, probably. Gaines is a six foot one, 205 pound freshman from Old Hickory, Tennessee, a true freshman who is the brother of Chris Gaines, the Vanderbilt linebacker. And there you see number 39. Kirk Crane and Kirk transferred from Memphis State two years ago sat out last year and has kind of taken control of this Auburn defense and he's the guy when there's some confusion in the huddle people are concerned he sticks his head in there and just says keep quiet and there's yeah. Renford Reese you know his dad don't you Bob Ernest is a writer for the Atlanta Journal Constitution a sports writer Excellent athlete in his own right, so it's no surprise that Renford's playing so well. On first and 10, they did give him a first down. Richardson, however, goes down hard at the 31 as penalty markers fly. Rocker, 74, and Kelly, 42 for Auburn. A loss of 10. And the marker down on the field. Are you saying that uh, his dad was a sports writer, so that no. obviously meant he was a good athlete? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? I'm going to go with that. <laughs> No, he's a good athlete despite he's a sports writer. We'll, That'll make you happy. Yeah, we'll get back there to that. There you go, hand. <laughs> Offense is declined. 
Play on second down. You want to talk about a good athlete, talk about 74 Tracy Rocker. Watch this. And he has an opportunity maybe to be the best in the tradition of the Auburn great defensive lineman. When you look at it, you've got Ben Thomas and Gerald Williams, Donnie Humphrey, Edmund Nelson, and Rocker has got really more raw, raw ability than any of those folks. He ran right past 6'3", 240-pound freshman Burr Seaver, number 76. Greg Smith, a redshirt freshman in his own right, 6'8", 270, a very good right tackle over there for Vanderbilt, is hurt today, has an ankle injury, won't be playing much. There you see the averages don't stack up to be all that big a difference between the two of them. But when you really start matching the maturity and the individual matchups, Auburn is definitely a lot bigger and a lot stronger than this Vanderbilt football team. You have 10 minutes to go in the first quarter, the a second good, quarter. Excuse me, a good statistic to go with that weight would be speed. You know, big is one thing. Big and fast is something else. And uh, if you can get it big and fast, it can give you a lot of problems offensively and defensively. Second and 20 now. The officials were talking to Watson Brown about standing too close to the sideline. That's not a problem for Auburn, in my opinion. Here's Brad Gage. Has some running room. He hesitated, in my humble opinion, but he might have been able to get it outside there. We'll come back in just a moment after we visit our studios in Atlanta and Kevin Slate. Okay, Bob, Illinois has padded its lead over Purdue. Brian Mankhausen, 35-yard touchdown pass to Anthony Williams. The Illini lead it 14 to nothing now in the first quarter. Now let's go back to Nashville. Well, Tim Foley, that is a surprise. Illinois leading your alma mater 14 to nothing in the first quarter. I'll just leave it at that. There's the answer. Why don't you just leave it at that? I think I don't think we could. That's Tom Powell down the field, I believe, number nine. Good uh, grief. And, uh, let's hope he's all right. He is a an All-American candidate. Auburn at free safety. Looks like they're looking at his shoulder. And what a fine young man he is. Great sense of humor, good spirit, and a fiery competitor. He's, He's had a lot to do with pulling this defense together, too, for Auburn. They've got yeah, the defensive secondary. You said there, there's a little bit of a question about Powell and Porter out of the perimeter, but in the interior there, they've nine Powell and 20 Shan Morris. Uh, of Atlanta and Shan Morris has beaten out you see that looks like Tom Powell's okay beating out Arthur Johnson who is also a great player so they're really deep at the safety position hit by his own man maybe Powell comes in there it looked like he, he twisted his shoulder down and caught a helmet in it I think he'll be all right third and 15 Vanderbilt from the 38 yard line of the Commodores Richardson hit Almost caught at the 35. Oh, Kurt Crane, Nate Hill, boy, they were active in the play. There's just no prayer for Richardson. He's taking a very short drop, but uh, Auburn's only rushing three and four players, and that's all they need to rush so far in this game. Vanderbilt with a fourth and 15 now, and here comes Alan Herline for the punt. He'll take it inside his 25-yard line. Trey Gaines back for Auburn. It's a sign of a good defense, Bob, a team that can get pressure without blitzing, without taking the risk. Wobbly punt for her line. Didn't get much on that at all. To the 26-yard line. Gaines gets a wall. Boyd's one tackle, not the second, and down he goes at the 36-yard line. With nine minutes to go second quarter, Auburn leading 24-3. It'll be Tigers ball. Renford Reese with the tackle. Fans, here's a unique guide to sports, Super Sports News. The monthly magazine of WTBS Sports offers readers insight into teams and players. It's not available anywhere else. To sign up for the next 15 issues, mail 1195 to Super Sports News, Post Office Box 2000, Decatur, Georgia, 30031. Bob Neal's tennis tips in that magazine, right? <laughs> yeah, play for 15 minutes and rest is my first one. Berger leads it out on the right side to Tommy Agee against the grain. Not much on it. Yard, maybe not more, but a penalty marker at the point of the tackle. That's how they opened the Tennessee game with that slip screen to the wide side and uh, it went for 20 yards against Tennessee. As Watson Brown looks on. A.G. really is enjoying catching the football, I think. It's something that hasn't been a, a, a common phenomenon for him in his previous three years at Auburn, and he likes getting the ball outside with those linemen in front of him. Biggest defensive play of the day for uh, Vanderbilt here. Clipping call against Auburn. They move the ball back. A lot of yardage. It'll be 15, and they'll spot it at the 21-and-a-half near the 22-yard line. The thing! Offense! First 
So Auburn has to get the ball to the 46, actually just slightly past the 46 for a first down now. 8.48 to go, first half. Out of the eye formation this time. Formation we saw so often with Bo Jackson. And this time they give it to 22 forward. On a player he is. He gets the first down a whole lot more, all the way to the 40-yard line of Vanderbilt. Brentford Reese and Eric Snyder with the tackle. 37-yard run by Fullwood. And Tim, this makes you wonder if Fullwood might not win a Heisman if he carried as much as both. Coward it, doing a good job, Thompson. And Fullwood has always impressed me. You know that, Bob. If he would have had an opportunity to carry the ball for three years as much as, as a Bo Jackson or Lorenzo White, I think he's got as much elusiveness as any back I've seen. Look at this balance. Move, spin, maintains is uh, footing just a great run Attempt from the 41 Berger in some trouble and he's going to go down but he does get a few yards back to the 40 yard line a couple of yards on Berger running out of the grasp of the first Vanderbilt player but Marvin Thompson 98 finally gets him what you've got to do against great runners like Auburn has is just not take them on one at a time because they'll whip you one at a time you have to kind of corral them and a bunch of you get there together and, and Vanderbilt has enough team speed to be able to do that. It's just a matter of getting free from those big monsters up front. Second down, let's call it second down nine. Auburn at the 40 of Vanderbilt. Berger to go to the air again. Screens out here. Agee breaks a tackle short of the first down, down at about the 34-yard line of a 30. Tommy Agee tackled by 13. Joe Gentry, sophomore from Humboldt. There have been so many changes on the Vanderbilt defensive football team. Henry Bielen at right tackle is in there. He hadn't played earlier. David Worm has moved to the nose guard. DeMond Winston has replaced Marvin Thompson at end. Scanlon has replaced Fitz at the linebacker spot. Roman has replaced Anderson. Gentry has replaced Johnson. And Price has replaced Wells. I mean, they've, it's been wholesale changes as Watson Brown has tried to find some way to put together some kind of defensive team here for Vanderbilt. And it's been tough. Berger, plenty of time to throw. Has his man there. It is complete. Wide open. Number 24, Scott Bolton. And he goes out of bounds at the 21-yard line. First down, Auburn. You'll see this play again. Play action is so effective for Auburn because they run the ball so well. You've got the tight end. Reese open. Walter Reese is open in the, uh, excuse me, Reeves is open in the corner of the end zone. He elects to throw it to the O-cut and got that one in there to Scott Bolt. They'll come back with that play again uh, before too long and hit the tight end. 6.52 to go first half. Auburn 24, Vanderbilt 3. Auburn first down, just outside the Vandy 20. Here's the pitch to Fullwood. It's a reverse to Bolton. Touchdown. Nobody's even in the park save Fawn Anderson. And Fawn Anderson didn't have much of a chance either. Auburn scores again. Watson Brown says, I know how Western Carolina feels. They beat Western Carolina 55 to 6. Catches. Western Carolina is not in the SEC. <laughs> now, what's, what's Watson Brown thinking right here? He's got a lot of pride. He's a competitor, and no one likes to be embarrassed. And right now, he's feeling a little bit embarrassed by uh, his team's lack of competitiveness in this game right now. We have 6.42 to go in the first half. It's Auburn 31, Vanderbilt 3. Tech leading 20th ranked North Carolina State now 28-7 second quarter. Cincinnati had an early lead over Penn State. The Lions now lead 14-7. Let's go back to Nashville. Where it's 31-3, Auburn leading Vanderbilt with 6.42 to go in the first half. Chris Knapp kicking off has the win to the back. It's going to go in and out of the end zone. There's about a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind blowing from right to left as you look down there. So the punts and the kickoffs from this one are, are going to carry if you're going in that direction. Let's have a look at that touchdown now. Here's number 24, Scott Bolton. You get a defense chasing the football and not being aware. It's just a matter of Andy McCarroll not getting the contain on the reverse. Stacy Searles knocks Don Anderson into the end zone. Anderson was fighting off three or four Auburn players. There was no way they were going to stop that play once it got around McCarroll. First down, Ted Vanderbilt from the 20-yard line. Confidence ebbing with every possession that Auburn has the ball. Carl Woods, three yards off right tackle. Rodney Garner making the stop. Auburn already into their second and third team here in the second quarter. 
Rodney Garner, a sophomore from Leeds, Alabama. We've seen about 20 players thus far for Auburn defensively as they've played second teamers almost across the board in one, one series or another. And they're so deep, Tim, that even when they play those players, they don't lose much. And they haven't so far this year. Exactly right. They've got competition really at every position. I think what uh, the position that probably is most indicative of that competi competition is Arthur Johnson and Shan Morris. Both players grading out approximately the same. It's been a real problem for Pat Dye. He was talking about it in his office. They're grading out about the same. And of course, Johnson a senior, Morris a sophomore, both very competitive people that want to play. Five yard penalty, first down. That was offsides against Auburn. First and five at the 25. Carl Woods didn't take the handoff. Richardson kept it. He wished he'd given it to him. And Carl Woods gets a couple of yards, but Tim Richardson is thrown for a loss. Scoring summary, the first two, by the way, came with about a minute gone in the first quarter. 38-yard run by Fullwood after a 49-yard kickoff return. Then Vanderbilt fumbled at the end zone. Auburn fell on it. That was uh, Kirk Crane, I believe, who fell on it for the touchdown. Auburn then led 14-3 after Vanderbilt got a 29-yard field goal by her line. And then from then on, it's been Tigers, Tigers, and more Tigers. Second down eight from the 22. Richardson to Woods. First down. Woods tried to get down before the hit, but didn't. He still got hit. Carlo Cheaton was the man who put the pop on Carl Woods, but he gets a first down, but watch the lick he takes at the end of this run. Watch Timmy Richardson here. Andre Bruce coming around the corner. Wham! Down they go. That's what the camera usually doesn't see. Boom! Woods in the open field. They just lost him in there. He did a check down and fights his way upfield. Vanderbilt with a first down out to the 39-yard line. Five minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the first half. Draw play to Carl Woods. And running room again. Tripped up after he gets to the 45 and a little bit beyond by number 35, Carlo Cheatham, a sophomore from Sheffield, Alabama. He's the number two free safety. He's in there behind Tom Powell. You remember Tom Powell, number nine, the All-American candidate for Auburn, was shaken up and taken off the field. He looked to be okay, but has not returned to play thus far. It will be second down three, Vanderbilt from the 46-yard line. Well, that isn't working very well. <laughs> the option play attempted again by Richardson, and it just doesn't have a prayer because of the penetration of this excellent Auburn defensive line and linebacker court. So it'll bring up third down three. Andre Bruce, number 93, with his fourth tackle of the game. Makes you wonder, not because of the play of Richardson, but makes you wonder, since that's not working, his effectiveness at running, if the passer, Mark Ratcher, might not see some action for Vanderbilt. I think he's definitely getting closer to entering the game because the option is not developing for Vanderbilt this afternoon. Third and three from the 46-yard line of Vanderbilt. Richardson to throw. It's tipped at the line. And there's going to be a penalty marker thrown against Shan Morris, who ran into Tom Gray, the intended receiver down here at the 44-yard line, after he missed the ball. He really got level. Shan Morris, a sophomore from Atlanta, is a hitter. He loves this part of the game. Kurt Crane had drifted back. He was just playing free in the middle of the field. Ball clearly not catchable, uncalled for, Shan. Absolutely. That's an injury attempt there. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense. And Shan will think it over. You know, that's a fine line. You want, you want that guy to be a hitter, so you don't want to take away his aggressiveness. No, you want him to be emotional, and but you want him to be legitimate shots. Well, that yeah. keeps this drive alive. That's 15 yards. It'll be first down. It goes to the 39-yard line. Commodores trailing 31-3, 3.43 to go in the first half. Piercy wide to the left side, Boo Mitchell to the right side, Vanderbilt out of the wishbone now. Here's the pitch. It's a reverse. Boo Mitchell caught in the backfield, thrown for a big loss. Actually, only about four yards. He got some of it back. Benji Rowland was there. 
with Auburn's penetration, not a wise call. Andre Bruce, look at that patience. Look at that patience. Ball going away. He has confidence in his teammates. They'll do the job on the other side so he doesn't have to overcompensate by chasing. He stays at home and turns the play back in. Well coached Auburn defense. Unquestionably Wayne Hall and Reggie Herring and the other coaches on Auburn's defensive staff have really done an exceptional job this year. Second down, 13 from the 42. Richardson with a play fake. Has his man open. Piercy drops the ball, I believe. Incomplete at the 27-yard line. Had a chance, couldn't hold on to it. Number eight, Tony Piercy, sophomore from Bradenton, Florida. What makes the play pass effective, Bob, is your ability to run the football. Uh, there are a lot of college football teams, and Vanderbilt, of course, is not one of them, that don't have many passes that don't come off play action. But if you're not effectively running the ball, the, the play fake isn't going to hold anybody. That's the nice thing about playing linebacker for Auburn. As a linebacker, you can be a little bit more patient in terms of attacking that run. It's third and 13, passing situation again. Let's see if Auburn sends anybody this time. Auburn with just a three-man stunt going. Almost picked off. Richardson had his man there, Carl Parker, but missed him. Chip Powell covering on the play. And Richardson only 7 out of 17 throwing the football. Has not been on the target passing thus far. Parker works to the inside of the corner. Turns inside. He's there. The ball's a little bit thrown, thrown to the inside. And, and uh, it looks like Richardson's not stepping up as much, much as he did earlier in the game, Bob. And I don't blame him. Every time he stepped up, he got a face full of Auburn. Tiger. He's only 5'11", 190 is Tim Richardson. His, his forte is trying to run the option. But as you can see, it hasn't been there. Here's her line trying to pooch kick it inside the 10 or cough the corner it. Let's see if he gets it done. I think he does. An excellent punt by Alan Herline out of bounds at the two yard line. And that's a 40 yard punt. Very effective by the senior from Atlanta, Alan Herline. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Times Reggie Slack has entered. He's the backup quarterback to Jeff Berger, 17, a true freshman, 6'1. He's got himself a tough situation here inside his own end zone. They just hand it to 36 Reggie Ware, their short yardage, 245-pound guard fullback who runs it out here across the five to the six-yard line. Clock down to 229, and just outside Dudley Field on the intramural fields here at Vanderbilt, you see the orange and blue of Auburn and the black and gold of Vandy, and they're playing rugby. I wonder what the score is. What are the eligibility requirements on that, do you think? There. <laughs> well, you got to be able to take a hit, that's for sure. Second down six from the six over. You give it to James Joseph. He gets it to the eight or nine yard line. So it'll be another third down situation for the Auburn Tigers here. Clock ticking down, 154 to go in the first half. And if you're Watson Brown, you go in at halftime to adjust, but you take a look at your personnel, and I don't know how you adjust if you're Watson. You might adjust by putting in Mark Ratcher and throwing the ball a little more. But understand, if you do that, you're giving a lot more time away if you go to a passing game to Auburn to get the ball and just keep ramming it down your throat. Maybe a tough decision for him. Third and three, Tigers. Pat Dye at this point is showing mercy on his former student. Here's Joseph, first down. Auburn out to the 14-yard line. Bob Scanlon, number 64, with the tackle. Everybody already in the SEC were very young into the season, very early, and everybody is already pointing to this being a two-team conference this year in terms of real power, and that's Alabama and Auburn. Now, LSU's playing Georgia tonight. Georgia, of course, still got a chance. LSU's still pretty strong. Then it fades real fast, save for dark horse candidate Mississippi State, but it may very well prove to be a two-team race this year. 58 seconds to go in the half. Here's James Joseph. Finds a little hole, gets about three to the 16, 17-yard line. This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Southeastern Conference, intended solely for the entertainment of our audience, which is why we're showing you the rugby. Any publication, reproduction, rebroadcast, or retransmission of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game in whole or in part without the express written consent of the Southeastern Conference and the Turner Broadcasting System is prohibited. Clock down to 31 seconds and continuing to count. This will probably be the final play of the first half. Auburn leading 31 to 3. Second down, six from the 18. Here's Joseph again. You can just tell that this young man, that's a first down. It'll stop the clock long enough to move the sticks. It's still ticking right now, however. 
They stop it at 11 seconds. This young man, James Joseph, who gained over 4,000 yards in high school and who was a parade first team All-American, is going to be a great tailback in Auburn. That's the end of the first half. After they set the chain, they start the clock. The 11 seconds ticks off. It's Auburn 31, Vanderbilt 3. Back with halftime activities right after this. Five for Vanderbilt. Johnson gets it out to about the 24-yard line where he's knocked out of bounds. There's the first half stats as you... Johnson gets it out to about the 24-yard line where he's knocked out of bounds. There's the first half stats as you... As we talked about, Vanderbilt had the ball more, but remember that two of the two of the scores for Auburn came in almost no time at all. So the rest of that 13 minutes and 31 seconds is really what you would count there for Auburn. And the yards rushing 165 to 17. Vandy last in uh, defense in the SEC and Auburn first. And that's what it's looked like in the first half. Tim Richardson remains the quarterback. We thought we might see Mark Ratcher. He gives to Carl Woods. He gets out from about the 30-yard line, and fullback Carl Woods, the senior from Gallatin, Tennessee, goes down, tackled by 47, Russ Carricker, junior linebacker from America's Georgia. It'll be second down for Vanderbilt from the 30. Carl Parker split wide to the right side. Boone Mitchell split wide to the left. Out of the passing set, lone set back is Carl Woods. They're going to give to Carl. Has a little running room. Gets near the first down out to the 34-yard lines where he needs to go. Andre Bruce, 93 with a stop. There's Mark Ratcher, the senior from Richfield, Ohio, 6'3", 210. He's got an NFL caliber arm. His problem, he is very immobile due to knee injuries. And I think if you're going to quarterback the, the Vanderbilt Commodores this year, you better have some mobility. Tim Richardson has taken a beating in the first half, and he's a pretty pretty quick little athlete. Uh, we saw Mark against Alabama, and uh, you know he took a, a licking, and uh, he is, just doesn't have any escape ability. And to run the option, you need somebody that's got some quickness, and that's why Richardson's in there now. But if, if it gets any more out of hand, I think you can expect to see Ratchet. That's a first down by about three or four inches, and they spot the ball at the center of the field there near the 34-yard line. Vanderbilt continues to drive here. Vanderbilt's moved the ball. They had nine first downs in the first half, but as has plagued them all year, they can move it between the 20s, but have had real trouble getting it between the uprights or into the end zone. On the first down, Richardson with a little time this time. It's incomplete. He just misfired, had Tom Fitz wide open. And Richardson, frankly, has not thrown the ball as well as he'd like to. Understand that he's, he's a little shell-shocked. He is a sophomore. He's only 5'11", and he's taken some real big hits in this game. I think that his size has worked against him. I think you'd have to stretch him out to get him to be 5'11", uh, really. And every game I've seen Tim play in, although he's got that great athletic ability, he gets at least one or two balls tipped by offensive linemen. And he, that's because he delivers the ball. He doesn't deliver the ball. He doesn't come straight over the top. He's a baseball player and throws a little bit like a baseball. Second down, Tim, from the 34-yard line. Richardson looking like he's lost in the New York subway down at the 34 yard line about the same results Andre Bruce is just destroying the timing on that particular play you know by the time he has the ball out from riding the fullback into the line of scrimmage Bruce is in his face and somebody is down on the field and it is Carl Woods the Vanderbilt senior fullback right at the 35 yard line Richardson has carried the ball nine times and get this statistic Richardson has had the ball on a carry nine times has lost 42 yards so that's the story of trying to get something done with the option today let's see if we see what happened to Carl Woods he's in the right of your screen oh he gets his knee gets caught up as Richardson rolls back to the inside and looks like he hyperextended his right knee Billy Rolfe, number 40, is the backup fullback. Brad Gaines has played a little bit in there today. We'll see who comes in to replace him. That's the best senior leadership that Vanderbilt has on offense out of Carl Woods there. So that will be a real problem. 
a matter of fact as I quickly scan the starting lineup I say he's the best senior leader he's the only senior in the starting lineup for the Vanderbilt Commodores Brad Gaines the true freshman comes in to replace him number 24 third and nine from the 35 we'll keep you updated on Carl Woods Richardson a little better protection this time better results too it's complete to Carl Parker for the first down at the 49 yard line sliding reception out there at midfield and Vanderbilt keeps the drive alive Good protection that time, a gain of nine yards. Actually, what happened on that particular play is Andre Bruce took an inside move upfield and he ran into Tracy Rocker and both of them fell down. <laughs> and that enabled Richardson to fire the ball low down the middle to Parker. Take it any way you can get it at this point. We have what uh, we'd call their spread passing formation for Vanderbilt. Bad Brad Gaines, the only setback from the 49-yard line of the Commodores. Crawford in motion. They give it to Brad Gaines. And he gets a couple of tough yards. Gaines is a very hard-nosed young man. 6'1". They list him at 6'1", 205, but he's up to about 215. So he's a, he's a real load there, even though he's only 18 years old. They're taking the tape off the Carl Woods ankle to get in there to attend to it on the sideline. We'll keep you up to date on him. Carl Woods. He does not, as you can see, clearly look like he's in severe pain. Hopefully that's a sign that he's not seriously injured. Second down seven. We have Fitz wide to the right side, the left side, and Parker to the right side. Richardson steps into the pocket and runs with the ball. And gets the first down to the 45-yard line. So Richardson, after his nine carries for only for minus 42, gets 12, and now he's to minus 30. Maybe if he can get some action going, that'll give me a little indication of Vanderbilt's success with moving the ball. But Tim, here we are again. The Commodores moving it in the middle of the field. Now, this is where it starts getting tough for the Vanderbilt Commodores without that good running game. And what happens is, between the 20s, most defenses will play zone defense, and Vanderbilt's offense uh, matches up well against the zone defense with those short option patterns. Now you're getting into more man-to-man -man territory, another 10 yards down the field. From the 35, first down 10. Looked like somebody jumped off sides. Bray, uh, Gaines gets really leveled. I think Eric Harmon jumped off. There's a mix and match offensive line in there. We started Eric Harmon at center today, but Harmon is actually a true guard. Tim Green plays some at center. John Denardi's a true freshman playing the right guard. He's a big, big man, but just a youngster. Greg Smith, the very good right tackle, who's really been coming on, even though he's a redshirt freshman, has an ankle injury. So we've seen a lot of moving around on the Vanderbilt offensive line. Dead ball, illegal procedure, offense, first down. First down, 15 now. Spot the ball just inside the Auburn 40-yard line. Richardson has a man again. It's Crawford holds on to it. Did he get to the 25? They say yes. I think we're going to have a first down pass. Shan Morris with the hit. Good read here by Richardson. Looks downfield. The weak safety had jumped the back, opened up the middle of the field. W Crawford came open behind Crane, and before Shan Morris could get there, he makes the catch. Well, Crawford, only two catches today. He's the second leading receiver in the SEC. 25 coming into the game, now 27 on the year. First down, 10 Vanderbilt at the 25 of Auburn. Richardson. Pump fakes, goes long, but his receiver is bumped out of bounds. We're going to have a pass interference call over there. Boo Mitchell, the intended receiver, but he was knocked out of bounds, illegally chucked down at the 10-yard line, and I believe it was that man there, Chip Powell, right cornerback. Let's see if we can pick it up. Chip Powell is a walk-on at Auburn. As a freshman, weighed 147 pounds, coming out of Prattville, Alabama High School. Has put on 30 pounds, worked hard, and uh, earned himself a scholarship and a starting job in this Auburn football team. They scored a touchdown against... Whoop. Chip goes. must have... Yeah. <laughs> he just got out of yeah, town. Right, yeah. <laughs> Boo, Boo thinks... Boo <laughs> leaving, leaving the scene of the crime there. Now, it's only a five-yard penalty that they're calling here. 
Let's see, could be just illegal. Let's get the call from the officials. Of Watson Brown confused as to what the officials are calling. I think they are too. They're in a huddle on the far sideline. They're calling it defensive holding, I think. Uncatchable ball. That's right. I'm anxious to hear this one. It's the hand offense. It was after the ball was thrown. First down. First down. Illegal use of the hands. Defense after the ball was thrown. It is a first down. They haven't even moved the sticks yet. I don't think anybody on the sideline understands what's happening. They're leaving them where they are. It's first down and five. They are leaving them where they are. If they'd have moved them, it'd have been a first down and ten. <laughs> This is a situation where Vanderbilt will try to run some crossing patterns. Pick and screen. Auburn has a tendency, as do most defenses, to come in this area of the field. Blitz. I'd love to be in on the discussion down there. So would Watson. He says, hey, it's a hard enough day, fellas. Snap the ball. Now they're going to huddle up again. They'd already set into the offensive line had Vanderbilt. It is first and five inside the 20 at the 19-yard line of Auburn. Auburn leading 31 to 3. 10 13 to go. Third quarter. Nashville. Barrett in motion. They give it to Brad Gaines. Gaines with a good run. First down to the 13-yard line. Shan Morris with the tackle number 20 for Auburn. Vanderbilt running effectively, Nez. That's what you pointed out, Tim. That's what they have to do to get it into the end zone. I think that's what the main concern Watson Brown has is he doesn't want to come into a game knowing that he's going to throw it 50 times. You just can't uh, build a program around that type of offense, no matter where you are. You have to be able to run the ball at some point. And I think that's one thing that he's trying to establish with Richardson and some of these young backs. You can see there that Vanderbilt has run more than passed today, even though they're trailing in the game. First and ten from the 14, out of the wishbone. The option, misdirection, Barrett spinning to the eight-yard line. Running pretty effectively here. Down, gets a six yards on the carry. Let's just check here. I believe the Auburn first-line defense is in there. Rocker, 74, 96, rolling, 99 hill, the defensive line. Hey Barrett, good block by Everett Crawford on Crane. Good sticking it up inside. Good aggressive football. It's second down four from the eight. Have to get it inside the four-yard line for the first down. Out of the wishbone again. Richardson keeps it. He drives it to the five, about a yard short of the first down. Brian Smith, number 90 for Auburn with a stop. That's the first time they have run that play that it had any semblance of an option of any semblance of having a chance usually Smith or Bruce or Gary Kelly are in the face of the quarterback as Watson Brown looks on we need seven boys that's what he's thinking third down and a long one ball's got to get inside the four so we have Mark Johnson Everett Crawford Brad Gaines in the backfield Hand off to Mark Johnson. Can he get there? It's close. He's slammed down hard by 90 Brian Smith. He may have been able to turn the corner. The bend on the spot of the ball. It's right over there near the, the flag. Looks like they spotted it enough for the first down. They'll bring in the stick to make sure. Then if you're Vanderbilt, what do you do? Go for it on fourth? I would think so. I would think so, yeah. You see Pat Dye looking on. Reggie Herring to his left. And uh, one of the things that Pat Dye is trying to emphasize because the caliber of teams that they have played early on isn't real high quality. They, they tried to impress on the players that it was important to get a little bit better every week. Forget First about down. winning. First down, right. Forget about winning. We're going to win. And, uh, but we want to improve. And they seem to have uh, really got a much more disciplined football team this year than they've had in the past. Vanderbilt with a first down and goal just inside the four-yard line. Look at that Vanderbilt with four first downs, but only three points. This drive started on the Vanderbilt 24. It's been an effective drive. Richardson under some pressure into the end zone. There was bumping there, but it was incidental. The ball wasn't catching. No, no catchable, no penalty marker. Intended for 87, Steve Kusanovich, the freshman tight end. That'll be second down goal. Good job of coverage there by Chip Powell. 
He hung right with the tight end. Sometimes a defensive back will get lost in the action. The tight end will go ahead and slam into the linebacker. The defensive back, it's his key. He'll take his eyes off them to check the action, and then all of a sudden, the tight end snuck out behind you. But Powell did a fine job. This will be second down goal from the four. 15th play of this drive, Vandy's longest possession. Richardson gets some protection into the end zone. Can't hit his man. Everett Crawford's who he's looking for. It'll be third down. Chan Morris covering on the play, number 20. So here you go. What do you call here? Well, I think what they're trying to do is they tried to get a little inside action. Uh, they, tr they crossed Fitz and Carl Parker hoping that in that man-to-man -man coverage uh, they, they may be able to come close enough to the defensive players that they will knock them off stride, knock them off their coverage. You're either going to go one-on-one -on -one out here to Boo, you may run some motion to get a pick back inside, some kind of a crossing route. Barrett falls down on the motion. Richardson with some time. Batted down. Great defensive play by Auburn. Shan Morris is a guy I come across. If he was about a half a second sooner, Shan could have had nothing but goal lines and headlines in front of him. Incomplete. Vanderbilt trailing 31 to 3. I believe they're going to try to try to punch it in anyway. I'm trying to work the pick, but the Vanderbilt players ran into each other, and uh, Shan Morris came free. So it's fourth down goal. Looked like Eric Harmon may have raised up number 68 down there. Vanderbilt just keeps shooting itself in the foot. Great drive. They had a tremendous drive, moved the ball very well. Now they don't have the opportunity on fourth down to really get it into the end zone thanks to that miscue. And they move it back to the nine yard line. Tim, if I'm Watson Brown, my concern, I think, in this game thus far, not trying to be too hard about it, but just honest, is that I'm not so concerned that Auburn is that good, but I'd be concerned about the mistakes and the, the deficiencies of the Vanderbilt team. He's, he's seen some real weaknesses here today again. You've got to learn to you play around physical disability and, and, and uh, insufficiency. But I'm sure it's frustrating for Watson when he's dealing with the caliber of young man that he's dealing with here to have the mental errors. I'm sure that's really going to frustrate him, and, and it's something they've got to eliminate here if they're going to be successful. Well, Vanderbilt does get the three points, and it's 31-6 to six with 7.36 to go in the third quarter. Tommy Agee is the deep man. It's not going to get deep enough to get to Agee. James Joseph at the 17. Crowd of players there, and Joseph who goes down short of the 25-yard line. And it'll be Auburn football. Eight-yard return on the kickoff into the win now. Joel Gentry with the tackle. There's Carl Woods. He has a severely sprained ankle, will not be back today. The senior fullback for Vanderbilt. Brad Gaines has replaced him there. Jeff Berger back in a quarterback for Auburn. We had seen Reggie Slack at the end of the second quarter. The true freshman. Trey Gain is in motion for Auburn. Berger. Short hops it to Bolton. It's incomplete. It's not unusual to see that play after Auburn had just played Tennessee. Now that's uh, Johnny Majors and Walt Harris's favorite play. Get it out there to that guy that can fly and turn him loose. Auburn defeated Tennessee by a score of 34 to 8. Surprising a lot of people, although now it's evident that Tennessee is going to struggle this year. They're playing Army today. We'll get an updated score for you in a moment. Here comes Fullwood. Doesn't get it outside. Only two or three yards that time. Bob Scanlon, who's played himself a pretty good defensive game for Vanderbilt over there at the strong linebacker position, makes the stop. Look at that one. That's a wild and woolly one being played in Atlanta. Georgia Tech out in front of North Carolina State. Penn State and Cincinnati battling 14-14. Cincinnati beat Penn State about three years ago. I think it was in 83. Berger with all day. Now he's got nothing but room. Doesn't get the first down. Goes down at the 33 on the third down and eight. So Vanderbilt covers well. 
and then holds him to only a five yard gain. Joe Gentry with the tackle, and Auburn will have to give up the football. Virginia Tech leading South Carolina. North Carolina leading Wake Forest. Wake Forest improved this year, but North Carolina is going to battle Clemson, I think, in the ACC. Tennessee in the second period, 7 0 over Army. Knoxville. Florida, second period with Kent State. Kent State has a better record than Florida. Who would have thought that? Beginning of the year. Don Anderson with the punt. He goes out of bounds at about the 24 yard line. We'll be back in a moment. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Quarter, Auburn 31, Vanderbilt 6. Vanderbilt football at the 24 yard line. First down 10. Tim Richardson continues to quarterback, directing the team on an excellent drive previously, 67 yards. They took the field goal. Richardson has his man, Piercy. Ball got there late, almost intercepted. Broken up at the 48-yard line by number four, Alvin Briggs, the backup right cornerback, junior from Greenville, Alabama. The man was open, but uh, the ball just did not get there in time, and the defensive coverage came back in there. Auburn really does an exceptional job of giving you a disguised look before the snap. It's almost impossible to tell what coverage they're going to before the ball is snapped, and that really limits the ability of the quarterback to get the offense into the right play. 33 Weatherspoon and 24 gains in there in the backfield for Bandy. Richardson complete to Boo Mitchell. Boo Mitchell to the 43 to 44 yard line. First down Vanderbilt. Gary Kelly with his third tackle of the day. The left outside linebacker. He's a junior from Birmingham. And Boo Mitchell gets his second catch. Two for 33 yards on this day. And now Richardson is 10 for 25 for 142 yards. He's into a passing mode, no question about it. He's not running because it's just not working. This is the most passes Richardson has thrown. Out of the wishbone. Misdirected. Scat back. He's only 5'7. Gets it to about the 48. Nate Hill trips him up, and I'm not even sure Mark Johnson is 5'7. He's listed at 5'7, but he's uh, he's from Birmingham, right out of the shadow of Auburn there. Yeah, Watson Pratt Brown re really was uh, happy to get him. He was a player of the year in the Birmingham area, and he was recruited by Alabama and Auburn and decided on the black and gold of Vanderbilt. Second down five from the 49-yard line. Grant Gaines to the 35 of Auburn. Carlo Cheatham with the tackle, and Vanderbilt's drive continues. A 16-yarder this time. Watch Richardson here. See, coming from the left side of your screen, Craig Ogletree really nails him. They find an open area, and they're on the move again, Bob. like the look of Brad Gaines. He's a, he's a tough fullback. It looks like he has some sure hands. Remember, he's only 18 years old, a true freshman. At the 35-yard uh, yard line. First down, Vanderbilt. Richardson scrambling to inside the 30 to the 29. Just a confusion in that play, and uh, but that was one of the most successful keeps that Richardson had. It'll be second down, about four at the 29-yard line. Auburn 31, Vanderbilt 6, 3.56 to go, third quarter. Full slate of SEC action today, and we'll take a look at the SEC standings and what's happening in the conference. Coming up here in a minute. Brad Gaines, first down, a little bit more to about the 21-yard line. Vanderbilt running pretty well against Auburn. I wonder if Watson Brown's not wishing he ran it a few more times down on the goal line previously. Here are the standings in the SEC. Alabama, Mississippi State both at 2-0, and and they're playing schools they should beat today. Arkansas State is a tough one, double-A power. Auburn 1-0, and and obviously going to be 2-0 and here today unless a miracle happens. Ole Miss playing at Kentucky. LSU has Georgia tonight. Vanderbilt, Tennessee, and Florida. Two big surprises there, of course. Tennessee and Florida winless this year in the SEC. On the first down, Mark Johnson got to the line of scrimmage and no more. 
We're going to go back to our Atlanta studios, and here's Kevin Slayton. All right, Bob, a couple of upsets we've been tracking that North Carolina State game for you. Now they're trailing 42-21 to Georgia Tech. That would be a major upset. Indiana has just scored to tie Ohio State. They haven't beaten the Buckeyes since 52. Back to Nashville. But it's in the first quarter. <laughs> right. I'm sure Ohio State and Indiana re re realizes that. 2.41 to go in the third quarter here. Auburn 31-6 over Vanderbilt. Second down 10 from the 21-yard line. Richardson incomplete at the 70 yard line broken up nicely by Carlo Cheatham he's had a lot of playing time today Tom Powell went out of the ball game he was shaken up in the earlier in the ball game and we have not had a report on Tom Powell I'm presuming that Tom Powell is all right but we do not know the fine safety for Vanderbilt uh, for Auburn is on the sideline holding his helmet it looks to be okay but he has not played much in this second half well if he's nick nicked you don't want to risk any further injury in a game like this. And Cheatham's played well. Cheatham has played well, and he needs the playing experience. It's third and ten at the 21-yard line. Stepping up to stop the blitz. But that doesn't help. 74, Tracy Rocker with his first sack of the day. You can see Auburn blitzing. They didn't disguise it. Eight-yard line. They just all stand in there. Good arm over. See how he slid that right arm underneath, scooted his way around the offensive lineman, and bango, Tim Richardson hits the turf. Three quarterback sacks today. Brian Smith, Gary Kelly, Tracy Rocker. Rocker with credit for one and a half sacks. Now we're in a tough field goal here. It's about 40, 36. It'll be a 46-yard attempt by her line. He missed the 43-yarder earlier today. Hit on a 29 and a 26. Got a good leg into that one. And it's good. He hit that one like it was a golf shot. And it's 31 to 9. Auburn still leads with 138 remaining in the third quarter of play. Nashville, Tennessee. Some sketches of blue starting to break through the cloud cover here, which pleases Tim and his Air Force. Here's Tommy A.G. Almost broke through the pack. Gets it out to the 28 and a half yard line where it'll be Auburn ball. He was tripped up by Joe Gentry, who's made a lot of special team tackles. Here's Pat Sullivan on the sidelines. He's selling tires in Birmingham and uh, has been doing the radio broadcast for Auburn football. And he's been a tremendous addition to their football coaching staff and just in terms of building the confidence of young Jeff Berger. Brett Fulwood. Slam down out of bounds. Vanderbilt covering well that time. Alan Roman leading the way, number 44. Gain of about two yards on the play. Fullwood on the afternoons only carried six times. Forget this, 90 yards. We have 10 James Joseph, 30 AG in the backfield for Robert. We're going to give it to Joseph. Short of the first down, gets it out to about the 37. Bob Scanlon with the stop for Vanderbilt, number 64. Joseph is a much different type of runner than they've had, Bob. I'm sure you can see as watching him run, he's more of the long strider, glider type as opposed to uh, Fultwood, who always looks like he stepped in an ant pile. You know, he's got those machine gun feet. It'll be third down to Auburn. Vanderbilt crowd here calling for a defensive stand at the 37 yard line of Vanderbilt of Auburn. Bullwood. Nobody will catch him. It's a foot race. I stand corrected. Alan Roman, the junior college transfer from California, chases down Fullwood, but not until Fullwood gets it to the eight and a half yard line, 54 yard run. And now in seven carries, Fullwood has 144 yards. That's 20 yards a pop. Short yardage is always a scary situation against Auburn. Brent Fullwood did the same thing to Tennessee last week, busted it for 85 yards. He gets that crack and runs away from the crowd. Here, Alan Roman displaying some amazing speed of his own. Young man out of Laguna Hills runs him down. 
That's the end of the third quarter. Auburn 31, Vanderbilt 9. Back to the fourth quarter in a moment. Our next break, by the way, for our stations on the line is commercial 19. We'll make up number 18 in the fourth quarter. Auburn first down in the third quarter. Now here they are first and goal at the eight yard line. Here comes Joseph. Driving and down he goes at the six and a half yard line. Joe Gentry leading the way. Tacklers for Vanderbilt. Joe playing a good ball game out of strong safety at six feet 205. Today's game being brought to you in part by Coors and Coors Light. Beers with a difference worth tasting. We talked about that Dick Hopkins, the defensive coordinator for Vanderbilt, and his job is even harder than Watson Brown's. Basically, uh, it's tougher to be outmanned on defense. You can't just can't do much if they're just bigger and stronger than you. Tommy Agee can't get in out of bounds at the six. Alan Roman chasing him out. It'll be third down and goal. And did you see that? Cincinnati, we showed it to you a moment ago, is leading in the fourth quarter over Penn State. Three years ago, Cincinnati ups, upset Penn State. And now they're on the road to doing it again, 17-14. Coach at, Penn, at Cincinnati at that particular time was uh, Watson Brown, his first coaching assignment at Cincinnati. Third and goal from the six. Berger rolling, looking in the end zone. It's picked off. Alan Roman with a great play and then a very non-intelligent move. Runs it out to about the three-inch line. Well, nice. Good job, bad job, Alan. He picked it off and gets tackled at the, about the six-inch line. You'll hear about that. Look at where the ball is. It's right on the stripe. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Most people in South Alabama buy their cars from Cook Hudson in Troy. The reasons are simple. The selection is superb. Chevrolets, Cadillacs, Oldsmobiles. The sales team is helpful, patient, and won't play. Cities and counties are also suffering. Insurance companies, as well as courts and lawyers, are responsible. I will fight for tort reform that's fair and workable so we can reduce high insurance rates and runaway awards. I will use the power of the governor's office to bring down liability insurance rates so folks like these can stay in business. Last week, Tory Price intercepted one at, in the waning moments against Duke. That was their second interception of the year. Alan Roman has beaten out Thawne Anderson at the left quarterback, at the left cornerback position. Thawne Anderson thought to be an all-conference candidate, had not played as well as he had hoped. And Alan Roman, the junior college transfer, has taken that position. Third and seven, Vanderbilt. From about the four-yard line, Richardson wants to throw. Does he have time? Yes. It's complete to Brad Gaines. He may have the first. Edward Phillips with the tackle, number 46. And it just depends on which foot that official uses to mark the ball. Looks like he got it. First down, Vanderbilt. That was a tough 10 yards. I want to just have a note here to our stations down the line because of the unusual nature of the time elapsing here in the third quarter. We got behind on some commercial announcements. Our next break will be local commercial number 18, which would be followed by local commercial number 20. Those of you at home keeping score understand what I mean, and so do the master control rooms or television affiliates. First and 10 from the 11. Not much. Stopped in the line of scrimmage. Gave the ball to 24, Brad Gaines. Uh, Tim, I realize with Auburn with a very big lead here that, that to a large degree, Pat Dye has called off the dogs. And they could certainly be going for a, their long runs and long gainers have been running plays, et cetera. However, Vanderbilt does seem to be getting a little bit of its act together offensively, which can't hurt them. They're playing against a lot of the first teamers for Auburn. Exactly. And uh, Pat Dye is talking to Reggie here and there on the left and uh, discussing what the problem is. And He's turned over the defense pretty much to his defensive coach. He's not really involved there. But Vanderbilt's taking a stand. Boy, Tim Richardson just does not have time to seek the second receiver. You saw him then trying to find the second man, pump fakes, but by then, the ceiling is caving in. 98 Goff, 93 Bruce. He's got time to throw the ball. It's... At that particular point in time, if it's not there right now, you got to get it out of bounds, and that's what it, exactly what he did. Third down and ten. 
Nine and a half to ten. There's 98. Robert Goff, Junior from Brinton, Florida. Long third down conversion here. Four man rush. Richardson keeps it. Penalty markers are down, however. Richardson out to the 46. Penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. Hold everything. I think it's going to be against Vanderbilt. 24 yard gain. Longest gain of the day by Richardson. He'd had a 20 yard run earlier. It's going to come back. That pistol keeps going off in its holster. Illegal procedure. It'll be five yard walk off. We understand there's five minutes left in that Cincinnati Penn State game. And Cincinnati continues to lead over Penn State 17 to 14. We'll keep you posted. Here it's 31 9 Auburn. 11 30 to go in the ball game. Vanderbilt has a third down 15 from the Vandy six and a half yard line. Vandy dodged another. Auburn touchdown when Alan Roman intercepted in the end zone. The Vandy had to start at about the six inch line. Richardson into his end zone. Has time to throw. It's picked off. Number 48 is Alvin Mitchell. And Mitchell to the seven yard line of Vanderbilt. 15 yard return on the interception by Alvin Mitchell, the sophomore from Venice, Florida. And now Vanderbilt's got to try to stop Auburn again. Had their opportunity, had the first down, 24-yard run by the quarterback Richardson all the way out to the 40-yard line, but illegal procedure caused them to have to put it in the air again. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Chadwick. Chadwick. Your snack, sir. Chadwick! Something wrong, sir. Oh, no. I always bellow like a wounded water buffalo. May I venture to guess it's your gout, sir? What extraordinary powers of perception. Of course it's my gout. Do you know? We're leading Vanderbilt. There you see inside our vantage point, high above the crowd. We got that thanks to a message that we got to our producer, Skip Ellison. He sent him a message via banner. We appreciate that. First down goal from the center. Campbell driving to about the two-yard line. Powerful running by the senior. 225 pounds from Florence, Alabama. Got some upsets in the making. This is less than five minutes to go. Cincinnati leading Penn State in the fourth. Indiana in the second quarter leading Ohio State. I don't know if I call that an upset of the making yet. That's early. Ohio State is struggling this year, though. And Boston College leading Maryland 7-0. Also second quarter score. We'll it's call a, two of those surprises. It's in the making, second quarter. Thomas Campbell, penalty markers down. Campbell down at the two. Looks like the tight end jumped, 86, Walter Reeves. For Auburn, if so, that'll certainly move him back a little bit. He got, I think Collis Campbell got about a yard or so. Illegal procedure, Auburn. Whenever we do Auburn, I... Especially in a game like this, they've scored as much as they have. You hear that fight song, and I can't help but uh, drift back to 1970, seeing a skinny linebacker out of uh, out of Auburn, Mike Colin, standing <laughs> standing on a chair at Biscayne College, singing, "Four Eagle, fly down the field." Senior, offense. By the way, that was a good job of singing, Tim. Uh, we, we're going to go to the Purdue fight song here in a moment. <laughs> By speaking of that, on a sadder note, War Eagle, the Auburn mascot, the Eagle, died. They're looking for a new one. Here's Collis Campbell to the four, where it'll be third down goal from about the four-yard line, Andy Baker. Uh, so War Eagle, uh, Auburn currently does not have a mascot. They're looking for a an Eagle for the mascot who is has been imprinted by a human being. Right. Now, you can explain what that means, Bob. Well, it means the eagle very early has shown a human being and therefore thinks he's one and thus works with him. The problem is if the human being sees the eagle first, it's a problem for the human. <laughs> they got a guy down there trying to fly right now. Dallas Campbell. Fumble, Fumble at the three-yard line. Looked like Vandy got it. Vanderbilt ball. Interception in the end zone, and then the fumble recovery. Joe Gentry popped it out of there, 
Number 13 and the number 95, Eric Snyder, fell on the ball. So Vanderbilt dodges the bullet again. This 31 to 9 score is hanging right in there, making this pretty interesting. And uh, you've got to respect Pat Dye. Uh, he's caught, he called off the dogs early in this particular football game. We have 9.41 to go in the ballgame. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Vanderbilt three of a half. Here comes Mark Johnson. He scat back. He gets it out to about the seven yard line. Has to go to the 14 for the first down. Mark Johnson's going to be a good running back. He has tremendous speed, very little, but you're going to have to, for Mark Johnson to be effective, you're going to have to have an honest game inside. I think so, and he's a he's a fine receiver too. He's just he's just too small to consistently take it up inside. Give him about four on the play. Let's call it second down six. Forty Rolf, thirty-three Weatherspoon in there in the wishbone formation now. With Crawford, Crawford gets the ball. That's very little yardage near the ten. Ogletree with the stop, number ninety-four Crawford. got famous siblings all over the place. Of course, your son here at Rob working uh, on the Vanderbilt SID staff, and uh, Dave is down in uh, Florida State. We're not sure what he's working on. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, not the staff. And one of the, uh, one of the crew members, Homer Acock, has a son that uh, last week was, was named the Player of the Week in the Atlanta area, tackle nose guard. There's Greg Smith shaking up on the play. He's that right tackle for Vanderbilt. We'll see what his condition is. Take a commercial timeout. We'll be right back. I have three grown children. One of them married. And I love Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Brave adults continue to challenge the notion that Frosted Flakes is just a kid cereal. Both my parents eat them. What if the kids at school found out? Because you love them as a kid doesn't mean you can't love them as an adult. With Dr. Coleman's help, we all can now admit we eat them, can't we? With that extra crunch in milk, that frosting just right, that tastes as good as ever. Frosted Flakes good, they're great. So dig in, they've got the taste adults have grown to. Mike, who's celebrating his 27th birthday? If you believe that, you'll buy some swampland I have for you in Florida. Guys. Got to be old. Looks old. He's aged quickly on this crew. Here's Richardson. Throws the pass for the first down to Everett Crawford on the third down and four. Out to the 16-yard line, and Vanderbilt maintains possession of the football here with 8.28 to go in the ballgame. And now we see Mark Ratcher coming into the ballgame because Vanderbilt trailing 31-9. to is going to have to put it in the air that much more. Tim Richardson, who's done a good job today. Richardson threw for 171 yards. 13 of 31, done a pretty good job under adverse conditions. And Ratcher, the senior, steps in at quarterback. And he's under pressure immediately, throwing immediately, incomplete, dropped by Rodney Barrett. Good coverage up there by Auburn. There's Edward Phillips, the linebacker back there. Edward's playing with a back spasm problem today. And there's Tim Richardson, number nine. He certainly got some baptism under fire. This is his third start as a Vanderbilt player. Started against Ole Miss last year, played against Georgia, led uh, Vanderbilt to a 13-13 tie. It'll be second down 10. Mark Ratchet, the new quarterback, the Vanderbilt Commodores, with eight minutes to go in the ball game, trailing 31 to nine. Ratchet, about a seven-step drop. It's complete to Crawford. He took a hard hit, but held on to it. Arthur Johnson, one of the hardest hitters on this Auburn football team, pops him after the 13-yard gain. We're going to pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. WSFA Montgomery. There's the score. Time remaining, 7.52 from Nashville, Tennessee. Bob Neal, Tim Foley with you. Hope you're enjoying our Southeastern Conference football game today. Auburn just blew Vanderbilt off the field early, kind of called off the dogs, and Vanny's been pecking away at the lead here in the second half. Ratcher. Ratcher misfires. He had Fitz open. Number seven, Fitz, was covered by number three, Kevin Porter. And they're going to spot the ball. They have it at the 29, where it'll be second down and 10. Tonight, two top 20 teams in action on many of these TNT stations. Washington versus Stanford. Skip Carey and Paul Hornig of Northern California. Stanford, 4-0, and oh, surprisingly. 
Not to Jack Elway, their coach. He's an entertaining and an excellent offensive football coach. He's done a great job since he left. Ratchet, it's complete to the 34-yard line to 12, Carl Parker. Very tough catch there in traffic. It's going to be hard to figure out how he got that ball in there looking at the film. He was surrounded. Well, he has a rifle arm. It is a 30 aught 6 but sometimes rifle arms will get you in trouble. They've been coming at after Ratcher, knowing that he's not very mobile. Look at that. <laughs> in the middle of the triad. 90-mile-an-hour fastball there. It'll be third down four from the 35. Second half, you can see Vanderbilt evening up the statistics, if not the score. Trailing 31-9. Big third down play here for Ratcher. Here they come. He gets rid of it. But Rodney Barrett was tied up by Andre Bruce, the linebacker, couldn't get loose as Ratcher had to let go of it early thanks to the blitz on the part of Auburn, and Vanderbilt will have to give up the football. Here comes Alan Herline in to punt. Interesting, Herline hasn't punted many times today. This will be only his fourth punt. It's been a strange game, folks. If you were with us at the beginning, the, you know. If you weren't, it's, it's, it's really strange. Auburn scored 14 points in a minute and six seconds to open up this ball game. And it did open up the ball game. Gain is with a fair catch. That was high enough to bring some rain here in this overcast sky in Nashville at the 23-yard line, a 42-yard punt. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. The staff at Paul's Body Shop hopes you are never in an automobile accident, but if you are, with today's long-term financing on inflated automobiles, they understand how important it is for your car to be repaired just right, just as it was before the damage occurred. That's why Paul employs only professionals and has invested in the latest auto body repair equipment to ensure your satisfaction and return your car to its original specifications. Paul's Body and Paint Shop, Montgomery's first choice, next to Zaire on the Atlanta Highway. At Paul's, they do it right the first time. Behind the scenes with Shari Belafonte Harper. I've had people say, who did your nose? It's like, excuse me. An intimate chat with Kirk Cameron. I don't want to be known just as, you know, a cute little kid on television. The secrets of Days of Our Lives star Deidre Hall. I'm real loose. Linda Ellerby. I'm 41. I'm jumping out of the plane. And model agent Eileen Ford. They're telling all on Public People, Private Lives. Saturday at 3, here on WSFA. Auburn has not scored here in the second half. They have not scored since 6.42 remained in the second quarter when Bolton took it in on a 21-yard touchdown run and went ahead 31-3. In the second half, only two Vanderbilt field goals to make it 31-9. Here's Reggie Slack throwing the ball to 87 Franklin Thomas, and he gets up close to a first down. An all-freshman backfield in there currently for Auburn. Slack at quarterback Joseph, the tailback, and Vincent Harris was the fullback and there's Ben Tamborello the Outland Trophy candidate we asked him about the difference in this team minus Heisman Trophy winner Bo Jackson I think that this year we've been forced to pull together as a, as a unit I think we're a closer team this year last year we had an opportunity to play with Bo Jackson the Heisman Trophy winner he was the type player that could turn a game around by himself in crucial in crucial situations he could turn the game around by himself now it's it's 11 people that have got to play and do their assignment to be successful so let's pull this closer together I think Ben Tamborello, an Outland Trophy candidate, two great centers in the country, maybe the two best, and I, and I don't know all the conference as well as obviously I do this one, but you take uh, neighbors at Alabama, Tamborello at Auburn, and uh, I don't know who I'd trade them for. Both of them are great players. That's Bob Scanlon, by the way, the linebacker for Vanderbilt. They're checking him over down there. And hopefully he's going to be all right. Looked like he had his bell rung. Lamando Fitz is coming in to replace Scanlon. He'll have to go off and play at least one play. We hope that that's all he'll have to leave. Fitz is the guy that Scanlon replaced in the lineup. The SEC lead leaders in rushing, we saw William Howard with a great rushing game for Tennessee and their loss to Mississippi State earlier. Then Fullwood, then Woods of Vanderbilt, who's hurt today. Woods has a severe ankle sprain. Fullwood today has 145 yards and only seven carries. Of course, Bobby Humphrey from Alabama. What a year he's had. Here's Reggie Slack. It's complete to the other freshman, Joseph. He pays for that reception. He is hit hard. Down he goes. There's Scanlon. In the second half, Bandy has run off 38 plays 
Auburn only 10. But I think that's more or less by design, uh, Bob. Uh, Pat Dye is, is being gracious this afternoon. They could have scored a bunch of points, but uh, basically really geared down. They're the leading receivers coming into today's ball game. There's Slack. Good penetration by Vanderbilt. Joseph goes down for a loss back at the 35-yard line. Two things happen here. You, you, have to, you have to really wonder about games like this, however, Tim, with 5.20 to go. Is One is it does help Vanderbilt a little bit, I'm sure, because they avoid the humiliation of what could have been possibly uh, one of these 63-6 to six kind of ball games. But Vanderbilt gets an opportunity to build a little confidence against a sound football team. You do have to say Auburn's going to go out of here 5-0 and and still not know how good they are. Exactly. They still really haven't been tested. This game was over early in the first quarter. Slack. Incomplete. Intended for Trey Gaines at the 50-yard line. So with 4.53, Vanderbilt will get an opportunity to have the ball again. And the people aren't going to believe the second-half statistics, but as Tim told you, it's, it's pretty clear as to what's happening here. Pat Dye just not pouring it on. Now, Pat is... They're the total offense leaders in the conference. Pat Dye is going to be concerned with the turnovers and the inability to get it into the end zone. However, when they were down there inside the five-yard line a couple of times, because that could haunt a team later. Bad snap, and they get it away, though. Good punt by Schulman. Down hard goes Thon Anderson. That was a courageous catch. He did not fair catch it. Got it at the 26-yard line. 37-yard punt. Good coverage by Auburn. It'll be Vanderbilt ball, first down 10. So Auburn gets ready to move into next week's game, and that is going to be a tough one for them because it's a traditional rivalry. Auburn will have Georgia Tech next week, and then they'll play Mississippi State, another tough one on their schedule, then Florida, then a breather of sorts. Well, no, check that. I was going to say a breather with Cincinnati, but Cincinnati's leading Penn State. Then Georgia and Alabama. Auburn's going to be tested the rest of the way. A diving grab and one of the prettiest catches you'll see by Everett Crawford at the 46-yard line. 20-yard reception, and this is real good hands here. After dropping some early in the ballgame, Crawford has come back to make some beauties. We've got him in isolation now, and this is the Everett Crawford we're used to seeing. Look at those hands and concentration as he picks that ball right up off the turf. 20-yard reception, first down 10 at the 46. 426 to go in the ballgame. Mark Ratcher in at quarterback in place of Tim Richardson. It's two out of six for 39 yards. Ratcher with a deep drop. Pump fakes. Can't get rid of it. And down he goes at the 40. And it's going to be a loss of about six or seven yards on the play. Let's say seven. Malcolm McCrary, Craig Ogletree, and on the play for Auburn. So it'll be second down long. Second down and 16, close to 17 yards for Vanderbilt with only 3.54 to go in this ballgame. Vanderbilt schedule. Next week they play at Georgia, followed by Ole Miss, Ole Miss here for homecoming, then Memphis State, then at Kentucky, at Virginia Tech, and Tennessee. you got to say Vanderbilt's got a shot in about all of those games, as opposed to saying they probably didn't have one here today against Auburn. 3.49 remaining, 31-9 Tigers. What's the first thing you think of when you hear the name Buick? Portholes, the doctor's car, Roadmaster. Well, whatever the name conveys, chances are it has to do with the quality side of life, which is the point. For over 80 years, the name Buick has stood for enduring values in this country, and that is still true. Yes, there may be sportier cars than Buick. There may be racier and certainly more expensive cars than Buick. But when it comes down to what really matters, on some cold, wet morning with a long drive ahead of you. When you settle behind the wheel of a Buick like this Park Avenue and touch the key to the ignition, that is when you come to know the reliability that goes into making a Buick a Buick. Consider it. Not because it's perfect, but because it's so good at the things that really count. Buick, where better really matters. It'll be second down, 17 Vanderbilt from their own 40-yard line after Auburn's fourth sack of Vanderbilt quarterbacks on the day, the first time Ratcher's gone down. Three-man rush. Ratcher has it tipped. You can rush these three front men for Auburn 
against a five and six man blocking front and they still make great penetration. It was tipped that time by the outside linebacker, six foot three inch Craig Ogletree, number 94. It's amazing how equal in ability all these folks are too. I think Rocker had coming into this game 22 tackles, Roland 22 tackles, Hill 23, Stallworth 20, Goff 18. All, all very effective pass rushers and players against the run. All over 265 pounds. I noticed that 19 Auburn players had more than 10 tackles. That'll give you an idea of the depth. This is third and 17 from the 40. Ratcher in trouble again. He had to just get rid of it because firing right up the middle that time was number 99, Nate Hill. Alabama just cruising over Memphis State. That's surprising nobody. Mississippi leading Kentucky in the second quarter. A little bit of a surprise. You don't really know how good Kentucky is till they get into that thick of that schedule, however. Georgia Tech. Now that's a surprise. 59-21 at home against North Carolina State. And Penn State in the fourth with a minute to go. About to avoid the, the upset by Cincinnati. It's fourth and 17. Ratcher's going to throw again. Again, a three-man rush. Ratcher has a man open. But he throws it right into the waiting arms of Chip Powell, number 27. And he's got a lot of running room. He can get outside. Ratcher's the only guy. And he makes the tackle. At the 15-yard line, Ratcher just misfired badly on that. The ball sailed on him. And Chip Powell gets a 46-yard interception return. Watch this ball. It just sails over everybody. He's trying to hit Everett Crawford in the zone, in the crease of the zone. It just, as you said, Bob flew. And now, here's fun. I got the ball, Bob. Now, let's keep this going. Let's keep this going. Look for some open space. <laughs> Those defensive backs, they like to run back and cross, back and forth across the field. Finally, Rat Ratchet corrals him on the sidelines. Let's see if they can take it in now. Freshman Benson Harris, the fullback, number 21 from Birmingham, carrying up the middle down to about the 10-yard line. Auburn's had opportunities down here to increase this lead, but no, so far haven't been able to do it. There's Chip Powell. What did he gain, 30 pounds since he came yeah, to Auburn? Yeah, 147 pounder coming out of Prattville, and uh, he's really, really pumped up and fought his way into the starting lineup. Got so, a success story that you like to hear about. You sure do. Second down, long five for the Tigers. Reggie Slack, the pure freshman and quarterback now. And he pitches. Good play by Vanderbilt. Loss of about three. David Worm making the penetration, stopping Collis Campbell. Campbell's getting a lot more carries in this game than he thought he would, but he's not had a lot of success. He's had the tough carries inside the 20. Right, and, and the Vanderbilt defense now has the picture. You know, they're not going to throw it in there, so now it's just upfield, and you don't have to worry about pass rush and containment quite as much. Time remaining, 2.20. Ball game, Auburn 31, Vanderbilt 9. This is third down nine. Reggie Schleck. He's going to throw this time. It's batted down. Beautiful defensive play over there by number 32, Noel Wells. Intended for 87, Franklin Thomas. So Pat Sullivan sees his student making a nice pass, actually, but a real nice play by Noel Wells. And 13, Joe Gentry for Vanderbilt down on the field about the 17. They're looking him over. So it'll be fourth down and nine from the 14 with 2.07 to go in the ball game and we're probably going to see a field goal attempt here on the part of Auburn. Watson Brown's team has held Auburn scoreless in the second half but as we pointed out over and over again Auburn has also uh, decreased its activities in the second half. And Watson Brown knew when he came in here that this team had a long way to go. Uh, you'd like to be competitive. You know going into a game like this that you're, the odds of, of you winning is I mean, Indiana Jones would have a better way of finding his way through the Auburn defense than, than anybody I know. They're, they're a tough group, so you know it's going to be a, a long day. You're disappointed to start like you started, though, by donating 14 points. They didn't need any help. There's Joe Gentry looking at his right knee, and hopefully he'll be all right. There have been four Vanderbilt injuries, and Vanderbilt has avoided injuries of any substantial nature so far this year. Let's hope that young man will be okay. Joe Gentry actually has not been playing Rover. He's a strong safety. Carl Woods is out with an ankle and he's going to be out for the whole ball game. Gentry looking okay as he goes there. Let's hope that that'll turn out to be not serious. Greg Smith was shaken up and out. He came into the ball game, the offensive tackle for Vandy with an ankle. Bob Scanlon also shaken up and out of the ball game. Seems to be okay on the sideline. And now Gentry. So hopefully all of those injuries will be 
not season ending injuries. 30 yard field goal attempt by Knapp. Is no good. He misses just barely, and the score remains 31 9 with two minutes to go. So Auburn has had four chances inside the 20 yard line. It's come away with no points, and despite the fact they're not trying to run up the score here, I'm sure Pat Dye has to be a little concerned that his team can't pound it in, even though he's in the second uh, second team players in a lot of cases. I'm, I'm not sure. He may <laughs> use, he may use that uh, sure. in order to uh, get them past this game and to get them thinking about the next game, but I'm, I don't think he's that concerned about it. I know John Norway's going to have his hands full. He's a trainer for Vanderbilt. Got a lot of people nicked today. It's complete to Barrett. First down to the 35-yard line. Quentin Riggins with the tackle for Auburn. Clock down to 152. A nearly a sellout crowd here at Dudley Field today. It was 40,000 plus. This place seats 41,000. They always sell a lot of tickets at the Vanderbilt games. This is the only sports show in town so to speak here in Nashville it's country music week by the way 61st birthday of the Grand Ole Opry and a lot of entertainment festivities happening in these parts this weekend and for the next week to come that one's complete to Boo Mitchell and he takes it to the 48 and then is buried 17 yard gain Chip Powell on the tackle with Russ Carricker Auburn just rushing three linemen now Ratcher makes a nice throw right over the top of character and then Boo draws a crowd. Again, once again, the sports information people have done a great job for us. Dave Housel, Mike Hubbard at Auburn, and Lou Harris, Tony Neely here at Vanderbilt. Make our job easy. On first down, Ratcher's going deep, but nobody's going to be down there looking for Tony Piercy. Once again, Ratcher had about a second and a half to get rid of that thing. And when you're trying to throw the ball 40 yards, that's not enough. <laughs> 103 to go in the ball game. Auburn 31, Vanderbilt 9. Vanderbilt goes to play at Georgia, and Auburn will entertain Georgia Tech possibly for the last time ever in one of the second oldest football rivalry in the South is Auburn and Georgia Tech, and it will end after they play this year. They start playing that game in 1893. Correct you are. Once again, thrown right into the waiting arms. This time, four. Alvin Briggs with the interception. Ratcher misfiring again as he tries to get this team downfield. And the secondary just laying back to pick it off. Briggs does a nice job of reading back to the ball. He's not being run off by the wide receiver. Responds up and makes a good play in a football. Ratcher didn't expect him to be there. Vanderbilt will continue to be last in the league, and they'll rank very low nationally in turnovers. Four turnovers by Vanderbilt today, three interceptions. They have one interception. Mitchell, Powell, and Briggs have all intercepted Vanderbilt passes. Vanderbilt's thrown 13 on the year now. And Auburn just going to run it out of the middle of the field. 48, 47 and counting. Collis Campbell getting the carry. And most of the crowd starting to lead, leave Dudley Field. I guess you saw earlier, we showed you on the scoreboard here, that the New York Mets came from behind in the National League playoffs. Houston had a 4-0 lead on the Mets. Mets came from behind to win 5-4. Lynn Dykstra got a two-run homer in the ninth inning to win the ball game by a score of 6-5 is the final. 6-5, the Mets over Houston. Here's the pitch to Campbell. He's thrown for a loss at the 35-yard line. That is Tim Johnson, number 17, the strong safety, making the stop. Clock down to seven seconds, six, five, and counting. And this ball game is mercifully over. A vastly outmanned Vanderbilt team did hold Auburn out of the end zone in the second half, but not until they trailed 33, 31 to three. Finally, losing 31 to nine. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. My name is Jimmy Evans, candidate for attorney general. My name is Jimmy Evans, Democratic Executive Committee. My name is Jimmy Evans for district attorney. Will the real Jimmy Evans please stand up?
To tell the truth, he's running for so many offices, he only has time to be district attorney when the TV cameras start rolling. While Evans was campaigning, the police department was forced to take important drug cases to federal court because Evans just wasn't available. Mark Montiel wants to be Montgomery's district attorney. It's his first choice. Vote for Auburn team been undefeated this far into the season. That 74 team went ahead to be 7-0. and There's a good chance this one could do likewise. Auburn will go home to entertain Tech, and Vanderbilt will now travel to Georgia. That'll be next week's game on our Southeastern Conference broadcast. Vanderbilt will be playing in Athens, Georgia, against the University of Georgia, 1230 Eastern Time. Georgia playing tonight down in Baton Rouge against LSU. Today's game has been brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buick. entire crew here in Nashville, Tennessee. Tim Foley, this is Bob Neal saying thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Coming up next on most of these stations, Super Football Saturday continues with a football action report.